Your life situation is one of the biggest contributors to your well-being. And this is how to change it. A man never steps into the same river twice as it won't be the same man and it won't be the same river. And although this sounds fun and interesting on the surface, no pun intended, you can look at your own life and it might feel like it has been the same for weeks or months or years. So you start wondering whether you are even capable of changing or maybe you're just not made for it. And you're probably familiar with this feeling of wanting to start a new chapter in life but having no idea about how to do it and where to start. In this video I'm going to talk about the psychology behind changing, the way to increase the chance that changes will happen and also what might be holding you back from changing. So what does it mean to change? It basically means that you're letting go of the old reality and you're embracing the new reality. I like to think of this as a gibbon monkey swinging from one tree to the other and letting go of the past, letting go of the first tree and trusting that he will land into the next tree. Research has showed us that we go through different stages when we go through a change. It's very similar to the mourning process of when we are losing someone or something. Think back to when you changed school or when you changed job or you finished a relationship. If the new reality is fun, the change is probably really easy to make and likely to be permanent. But if the new reality is unpleasant, you will see that you keep trying to go back to the old reality, even though it's gone. Think back of that moment when you were trying to text your ex, but you were just trying to get back to the old reality and that's no longer there. Change doesn't fall out of the sky and if it does, it's often not the type of change that we wished for. And in a minute, I'm going to explain how to increase the chance of change. So what do psychologists really say about change? It all comes down to how much you want something. Do you want the old reality or do you want the new reality? That's the most essential question to ask yourself. And after you have opened up your mind and your heart, it all comes down to asking yourself, what do you want? And do you really want to change? Because if you don't want it, it's not going to happen and you're going to block yourself in any type of way possible. And of course, this can be difficult because the new reality is unknown and in order to change, you need to change your patterns. But the only way to do this is to be relaxed. And I think this video from Fight Club really is a great metaphor for describing that you can only change if you're relaxing into it, if you're accepting what's happening, even though it really sucks. It will hurt more than you've ever been burned and you will have a scar. What are you doing? Guided meditation work for cancer could work for this. Stay with the pain, don't shut this out. You have to give up. First you have to know, not fear, know that someday you're gonna die. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. One step closer to hitting bottom. I know that most people, including myself, are constantly fighting change. But let me repeat it that if you want change, you need to change your patterns. And if you want to change your patterns, you need to be relaxed. And I know that being relaxed is easier said than done. It's one of these things that you cannot do actively, like falling in love or being yourself or making art. It's something that you have to let go in order to get it. You can only do it from a point of acceptance. In the last video, I have shared how to influence the things that you cannot directly influence. I will put a link at the end of the video and it's about second order consequences. So check it later. After deciding that you want change, what's next? In one word, it's serendipity. Nassim Taleb, the author of the book Black Swan, talked about serendipity and going to parties. What this means is that you should put yourself into environments where there's a lot of possibilities. 
Think of real parties or conferences or some corners of the internet. They will all increase the chance for you to have a black swan event. Think back to how you've gotten your last job or your last relationship. It was probably through something or someone that had a big network that opened you up to many possibilities. We have now come to the last part about changing. It's a bonus round and it can be a bit dangerous so you have to be careful. It is what Sam Ovens calls the alchemy of the self. Where instead of struggling to achieve your goals as yourself, you become someone else who is achieving your goals with ease. You write down in detail who you would like to become and repeat this to yourself every day. And I know this sounds really silly, but it works, but you have to be careful because you can become someone else. But the real question is, is it still authentic? Many people, including myself, have fallen into this trap of wanting to become like someone else instead of becoming someone else. Think of it like a Pikachu trying to evolve into a Charizard. In this case it will happen, but he will always feel uncomfortable because it's not natural for him. Rather, figure out what the evolved version of you looks like in its purest form and become like that. Become that right you or that right you. If you want to know more about this approach, check out the free link in the description. I've put up a lot of resources there about the alchemy of the self. The goal of this channel is to help you find focus. Everyone always told me that I had to focus, but no one told me how, and that's what I hope to help you with. So there's also a link in the description for a free focus consultancy call. I hope to see you there and don't forget to check out the video about second order consequences by clicking in the corner over here and I'll also put a link in the description. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in another video.